Hello and welcome yet again to another episode of the Corgi Town USA podcast. Here on season two, we promised more shenanigans and well, we're going to bring them. I'm Candy. This is Chuckles in my lap, the sporks co- spokes corg of Corgi Town USA. We have Mortimer running around on the floor. Boog and Ham are um, enjoying their quiet time as they're known to do because Digby didn't come over today. That's right. Digby is uh, hanging out at home with the honorary Corgi Wigan. Wigan. Yeah. So, and Booger could not be more elated about that because yes, she does not like Poor Digby. She, yeah, she is not. She is not his biggest fan. Yes. because he likes to play with her, and he's completely enamored, and she doesn't want anything to do with him. So, more pandemonium, and yes. of course, we have Cat Cohen. Hi, everyone. Business coach, TEDx speaker, executive producer of this podcast. That's right. Yeah. So, thanks for joining us and staying with us. And I'm super excited. Yeah. Um. Not only are we um, participating in the race for Shade Out DM this year, we're the we're a corporate sponsor. And Shade Out DM is Shade Out DM is an organization to spread awareness for degenerative myelopathy, which is canine ALS. Yes. And I was excited to come across a news story about a DM corgi named Ash, whose cork paw rents have a wheelchair with skis built in it that, because he loves the snow. That's going to be um, fun and a little tough right there. It's it's all, It always gets us right in the feels. Yes. Right in the feels. Right in the Smack feels. dab in the feels. So I was excited to find them and reach out, and they were willing to join our little podcast today. It'll so be great. Yeah. So we have Todd and Jade Blackshirt and, of course, Ash. And Ash has uh, members of his pack as well. Should we bring them on? Absolutely. Let's bring them on. Blackshirt is welcome. Hey there. Thanks for having us. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you donating your time and your story and telling our audience about your journey with Ash. Absolutely. And so I'm to understand that Ash is 11, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, so still a young cork. Yes. Yeah. We I have two 11-year-olds. Yep. Yeah, my two rescues are 11, both the same age. Well, we think. We're not sure with Booger. We think she's 11-ish. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but tell us, we want, because we're all about corgi lifestyle here, we're all about the story of the corg. Please tell us how Ash found you. Well, we were... Um... We've been we've been wanting a dog for a while and we we were trying to be adults about it. And so we had decided that as long as we could pay off some debts, then we could get a dog because it's one of those things. You know, you want to make sure that you're adult enough to have a dog, especially a corgi, because, of course, you as you guys know, that's it's not an it's not a Labrador. Right. I mean, these are these are feisty little creatures. And so we uh, we paid off some debt and made sure that we were. responsible enough and congratulations thank you and uh, then we went and got um we saw him him in the paper and so we went and took a look at him and actually originally <laughs> we wanted a fawn right one of the one of the uh, one of the sable corgis and um we were going to name him copper we had it all planned out and then of course we got there saw the litter and did the did the uh, tests that you do on puppies and he just he just was this bright star you know i mean it was i was like and we you know on the way home we were like okay well what do you think and and todd said well if i had my druthers i'd have the, the little try because that's what he is you can't really tell but he is he's a try yeah, redheaded try yeah yeah and uh Aww. and so um i was like that's what i want to i want the try and so right then and there his name became ash Aww. that's so cute so, yeah my first corgi was a sable. That was Lilo. Yeah. He was a sable. Yeah. The most perfect, precious boy there ever was. No, they're amazing <laughs> other... animals, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Your other corgs are going to get um, complexes. Yes. They already have complexes because I have to call my dog sitters when they're under dog sitter care and say, did you tell them how perfect they are today? Because I don't want them to forget. And I'm not there to remind them. Please don't forget to tell them how perfect they are. I'm so glad I'm not the only one that does that. <laughs> That is a corgi person thing. We are a yep. special breed of crazy with our animals. Corgi yep. or non-corgi. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on people, vacation. You're on vacation. <laughs> yeah, people want to see my corgi when I'm on Zoom calls and, and I pick him up and, and I uh, 
and and I pick up the uh, Australian cattle dog, the blue healer. You pick up Wigan? Yes, I do. Wow, muscles. Yeah. He's only 30. <laughs> he's only 30 pounds. He seems huge. Maybe it's the legs. It's the he legs. He has legs. He has legs. And um and and I offer him up to anyone who is willing to adopt. Nobody wants him. Digby or Wigan? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So Digby is a fan favorite. Yes. Digby is a huge fan favorite. And the I, the Blacksters know not, and our new audience members know not, right. but Digby was my foster fail. Oh, yes. Yeah. He was a foster fail, and um, he I rescued him from a family that couldn't keep him anymore, and then he was with us, and I was going to foster him, and then he just kind of stayed, but then he met Kat, and Kat... He actually met my... He actually met me and my late husband before my husband passed. Oh, yeah, that's right. Barry met. Oh, he only met him like once or twice, though. Yeah. Yeah. Bef yeah. So Kat was a grieving widow and took really, Digby really took to Kat, so healing he, to her. He put his little paws right there and that was it. He did. And I was like, she has no idea what she's getting into. Because <laughs> he looked so well behaved. <laughs> yeah. they can it's because he. They can tell when you hurt. Yeah, they yeah. they absolutely can. They absolutely can. But I, he's a fan favorite, and he I is, he is a fan favorite. He lives with Cat now, and he's here yes. all the time. He's an extended member of the Corgi Committee. Absolutely. But we run in. I run into people in town that say, "Hey, I met Cat," and I said, "How did you know you met Cat before you met Cat?" We saw Digby <laughs> <laughs> around town. He is a yes. fan favorite. He's a little local celebrity. He really. is a little local celebrity. Yeah, people they hike on a mountain around town, and they'll say, "We saw Digby hiking the mountain today." That's right. <laughs> That's right. So back to Ash. Yes. <laughs> Ash is us. like, Ash is sitting there going, uh, you're not talking about me. I thought this was my interview. I thought this was my interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're being terrible host, Ash. I'm sorry. He does Thank this you. to calm himself. He'll, he'll calm himself by licking things. I don't know if you guys have that uh, issue as well. Yes. Yes. Booger, Usually especially. Oh, well, thank you, Ash, for joining us. And we appreciate you so much. And we love your story. So he, we know he likes to calm himself. Tell us about Ash's personality. Uh, well, if uh, <laughs> we always say that if he was a human, he would be a soccer hooligan. Uh, because, <laughs> and, and I mean, like, literally, we'll be on walks with our dogs. And Ash is just kind of tooling along in his wheelchair and having a good time. And then he'll see another dog. And suddenly he is a German shepherd. And he is... <laughs> He energized is, he's explaining to that other dog how wrong he is for being there and all of, of this and he did that just this morning it was the the owner of the of the dog in question was just enamored with that <laughs> <laughs> he was i was like yeah that's great until he bites you <laughs> yeah they, what, they are feisty for little guys what do you certainly. call that corgitude corgitude yeah. cat yeah. calls it corgitude it is corgitude absolutely they're and, opinionated <laughs> Definitely. For a while, we commuted, and so he would get to go to a doggy daycare every now and then. And they had the cameras, and so we'd be able to watch. And if it would snow, he would herd all the other dogs and take them outside to play in the snow, even if they didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can. Can you guys in, in, in our listening and, and viewing audience just imagine that? I <laughs> I absolutely see because. I have two herding dogs and they try to herd each other. Yeah. And then when they fail at that, they try to herd the birds and the chickens <laughs> and whatnot. But I can only imagine at doggy daycare. Okay, come on, guys. We're going out. <laughs> we're playing in the snow. <laughs> one, more than one occasion where I'd look at the, the camera and I'd be like, where's Ash? Where's Ash? And then I'd get there and they'd be like, Ash is in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's not alive. alive. Yep, he liked uh, he liked to kind of tell everybody he was boss and that they should do what he wanted. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a corgi at all. No, it doesn't. No, <laughs> I agree. He was boss, so yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's too funny. And you live in Nebraska, right? Could right. we get a lot of snow? Yeah. yeah. We get a lot of snow. Yeah. So all winter, right? We have winter. Yeah, we have snow uh, pretty much from end of November to. I don't know, mid February, March. March. Yeah. That's all winter. That's yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly I, I thought Nebraska had snow now and it would last till July, but what do I know? <laughs> uh, We're not that far north. 
Yeah. You would love it. You would love that. The temperature well, we're, dropped and he does so much better when it's so cooler out. Um, he, yep. just, he loves the cool weather. Does he, and now is it that, and, and, and I'm looking at this from, from a DM perspective, is it that he loves the cool weather just because he loves, you know, there people love cold weather or love hot weather, or is it because he feels better in the cold weather? I think He's it's all of it. the above. Yeah. Um, okay. Plus the fact that when it snows, uh, and you guys probably, I don't know, do you have dogs with DM? No, we've oh, not. So I have two rescues that I don't know. They're we don't know. Okay, uh, but well, so um, far no no signs. Yes, yeah. My my rescue as well. Okay, good. Well, and and uh, thank goodness for that. Um, but yeah. but one of the things that we found was that in the snow. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> he can stand mm. again. Yeah. Oh, he stands in the snow. That's amazing. Because it holds him up. Oh, well, he gets his little moment. We we learned from sweet baby. We learned from from Shade Out DM and being involved in Shade Out DM that DM dogs don't regulate body temperature. That's true. And that, it's just like ALS. Yeah. My sister passed away from ALS in January of 2020, and she just I'm so sorry all the time. It was awful. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, that's that's a tough part. And I mean, trying to mitigate the temperature, be it if you're in extreme temperature, hot or cold, <laughs> we're in the desert. So we have we have the heat. That's why yeah, we, we're heat. like, what is the snow you speak of? In yeah, cold? That's true. Yes. <laughs> we're like, that. Well, and when he was a puppy, I mean, the very first thing that he discovered in the house when we moved him in, the very first thing was the air conditioner register. Ah. <laughs> At the time, he was just a little bit bigger yeah. than it. And he would go and cover the entire register. <laughs> and he would just, he'd live there. That's where he stayed all summer long. Wow. He's like, all this AC is for me. Yep. He's like, thanks for air conditioning my house. I appreciate it. <laughs> Who else would the AC be for? Yeah. 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 Orgy, king of the Orgy. castle. That's right. We are royalty, you know. <laughs> well, we uh, thank you again for sharing that with us. And if you'd be so kind to share how you came across um, about your journey with the diagnosis. And we, again, one of our good friends, uh, Tani with Shade Out DM, tells us about her her corgi, Casey, and how she started that organization. Um, Casey was only eight. That was very young for a uh, yeah. DM diagnosis. But at the time, nobody knew what it was. And yes. none of the vets knew what it was. And so it's kind of, it's still new. It's still emerging. So Richard. if you would be so kind to share with us um, Ash's story with how you discovered how you got the diagnosis. Yeah. So um, with him not coming in the kitchen. Well, yeah. And, and actually that is, uh, so our house has both tile and carpet, you know, and, <laughs> and so um, he would run around on the carpet and then we, he would get to the kitchen and he'd just stop. Oh. And of course I have uh I'm a little crazy. So um, <laughs> I was like, is there something in the kitchen that's keeping him out of here? I mean, is there, you know, is there some sort of bad mojo or something going on? In we the have a ghost. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. there's a ghost and it's keeping Ash out of the kitchen. But Bucky went in just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, then we, we, you know, <laughs> as dog owners, you know, there's water all over the house, water bowls everywhere in every room. And one of his favorite water bowls, he wasn't going to it anymore. And mm -hmm. I watched him uh, try to go in there and I saw him, his, he would get his front feet in and then his back feet would start to slide. And I was like, okay, that's weird. So, cause it had never happened before and he was nine years old. And um, so I started like checking, making sure that his, that his paws were moist and that, that everything was good. Cause I thought maybe it was dry feet. And um, it kept happening, kept happening. So we put a rug in there. We have many rugs all over the house now um, <laughs> just to make sure Ash can get around. And uh, so we put a rug there so he could go in and get, and get water. And then I started going down the rabbit hole. And I'm sure you guys know what I mean. You start mm -hmm. Googling things. It's like, okay, what's, yes. what's happening? What's happening to my dog? And because um, we started seeing him start to knuckle you know, knuckle under. And yeah. I took him to mm. our vet and our vet hadn't, she instantly diagnosed him as IBDD. Told me he needed mm. uh, crate rest, extreme rest, 
Um, now, granted, you know, like you said, DM is not something that anybody really knows fully about. Right. But neither is ALS. I mean, that's the right. that's the problem. And um, so we uh, we tried to get him in. Let's see. That was March of 2020. Yeah. Um, we had a contact at Iowa State University, oh. and they have a wonderful vet program. And so um, we tried to get him in and they were like, we're not, you know, because of COVID, they just weren't seeing new patients. Yeah. And so waited and waited and waited and he progressively got worse and worse and worse. The more rest I gave him, the worse he got. Mm -hmm. And okay. I was like, this isn't working. So then I started going down another rabbit hole. I sent, you know, I found out about the, di the, uh, the gene where you can send off and have them tested. So of course went down that rabbit hole, got that back devastating news that he does have the gene, of course. Of and, course. um, but I found that when I exercised him, we started in with the hydrotherapy and we went to the, um, we did the acupuncture, mm -hmm. you know, the, and all of that. I mean, like, we were just throwing everything we could at this thing, trying to, you know, make sure that he had some longevity. Yeah. And uh, when we went to, uh, when we went to Iowa state, we, we kind of knew what, what was going to come back as the prognosis. It didn't make it any easier. <laughs> well, I know, but as I don't know if you guys know this or not, but DM is much like ALS is a um, process of elimination. Yeah. So they have to look at him. I mean, like he went under MRI. He did, you know, he had everything done to him in the world. And uh, they were like, well, he doesn't have IVDD. So it's got to be DM. And we went, Great. shucks. <laughs> yeah. So, so now so it's just a matter of keeping him active. That's yeah. the best. I mean, that's the best thing that we're learning to do is that they is keeping them active. Yes. And were you aware of degenerative myelopathy before you got the diagnosis? Or was this something that you discovered when you were searching and trying to research? No, I actually knew about it because of Jasper Islington. Did you ever, there was a, yeah. there was a, I think it was Instagram, Jasper yeah. Islington. Yeah. yeah. He was a wonderful, beautiful little corgi and he had it. And I was like, oh my gosh, what a sad thing. And, and when I, you know, now that of course we're embroiled in it, it's um, still sad, but now it's yeah. just more like, you know, we got it, you know, now it's focusing on keeping him happy. Right. Right. It's, it's a, um, it's a caretaker lifestyle. Yeah. And we've, yes. we've talked about this, about DM before that it's important to have support for yourself as well. Uh, because what happens is it you that becomes your directive you have other things in life but your directive is is caring for your dm it, your dm dog it's just yeah. like any other it's just like any other caretaker position it yeah. really is yeah so that this one i get i can carry around poor those I, I my heart goes out to caretakers of of human beings because uh, mm -hmm. dm i can carry outside and put him in his cart and he goes running around but yeah you do that with als patients um, right. Which are really strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bodybuilder. Yeah. My grand my grandpa had a, a neighbor that passed away from ALS and he was going and reading to him, reading to that neighbor because the neighbor loved books mm -hmm. and he had lost, you know, it had gotten up to his arms and his fingers so he couldn't hold the book. Yeah. So my grandpa would go and read to him. Well, then it got to where my grandpa would hold the book and then he would actually read to him because he also lost control of his eyes. Yeah. Oh. And so my grandpa, and this was his neighbor. He wasn't caretaking him. He just went over to try to give him some something to enjoy right. reading his story, and uh, told told me that story. It's um, I, I've been told that some of the research that's being done with degenerative myelopathy is also helping the humans. Oh, that'd be um, great! Yeah, with ALS, some of the things that they're learning when it comes to genetic markers and and things like that. So we can be very hopeful that strides yeah. are going to be made not only for our furry friends but for our humans, our two leggers as well. Mm -hmm. um, bipeds, that's what we call them. <laughs> yes. Bipeds. Yeah, one of Ash's favorite things to do with the pack. We we walk with a pack on the weekends. Big, big pack of people. We've walked with them for, geez, I don't know, seven years, yeah, eight please, years, something like that. And we have this huge, huge, beautiful park in Lincoln called Wilderness Park. And it's, it's acres, thousands of acres big. And wow. um, Nebraska, 
if you don't know, it's very flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my friend lives in Omaha. She went oh, to Creighton. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. Okay, great. Yeah, go go Creighton. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's very flat. So it's nice to have a wild place where we can walk and smell and get all those, you know, wonderful wild smells for the, for these guys. And we have pit bulls in our pack. We have wow. porgy, porgy. We have lots and lots and lots and lots of rescues. <laughs> yeah. And, so uh, so this pack, this pack you talk about, uh, you had mentioned about uh, off camera, you had mentioned about Ash's pack. Yeah. So this pack, you all go and you walk together and these are humans and their animals and, and, and their you just animals. have a big walking party. Yeah. yeah. Every weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, every, every Saturday and Sunday. That is so fun. Yeah. It's, and that, and that's where Ash, I'm guessing gets a lot of his exercise. He does. He on gets weekends, a lot of yeah. exercise on the weekends, um, with the pack during the week. It's usually the neighborhood walk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but, how fun. Yeah. They do about, well, we, we, you know, cause all of our dogs are <laughs> getting older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. And so we probably do about, you know, we used to do like four and five miles a day. Now we're down to like two and a half. Everybody's like, shoo, really tired. And that was quite the trek today. Yep. <laughs> if it gets too much for him, he goes into a backpack. We have a canine, um, canine backpack for him. Mm -hmm. And so if it gets too much, he goes in the backpack and he, he's uh, Todd's little buddy. <laughs> How fun. Then you yeah. get to travel Yoda style. Still get yeah, the smell. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yes, he loves it. Well, tell us about the um the, the skis. So you, you have the wheelchair. Now, did the wheelchair, did you purchase the wheelchair and then retrofit the skis? Or was, how did that process work? Well, um, so we're part of a, I'm part of a uh, Facebook group called Corgis on Wheels. I don't know. If yes, you've heard of it we know not. Corgis on Wheels. Yes. yes. Fantastic. Yes. Um, I, this people have t talked to me off of more, more uh, <laughs> ledges than I can tell you. Um, a lot of collective experience oh, with yeah. what you're dealing with. It's a yeah. 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 And uh, there was one lady who, because I, I reached out to them and said, you know, we're going to need a cart. Yeah. And this lady, I, can't, I feel bad because I can't remember her name, but her, she had lost her dog to DM and she gifted us her cart. Oh, how wonderful. Aww. That is beautiful. Because they're not cheap. <laughs> no, they're not. I and would paid it. I would have paid it, you know, three, four times over. But um, yeah, it's nice we were, to have it gifted. So we actually did an episode um, with, we were talking about Shade Out DM, but Tani runs the with an associate with Bandits Band-Aid. Yeah. Which who who we are? That's one of our. Uh, we like to donate to Bandits Band Aid. We uh, going to be running fundraisers as well. But if for those listening, watching who don't know, Bandits Band Aid is an is an organization that helps uh, pet owners with their vet bills. Yes. But there's also they have Casey's Cruisers, which is the loaner cart program. Yes. So we did a whole episode on that about how anyone listening, watching, if you want to help, you know, someone who is might have to go through the journey or if you're going through the journey yourself or you're questioning, they do have a loaner cart program. You pay for shipping. The agreement is that you have the cart and that you return it. But sorry to segue there, but it's important information for anyone who's yeah, there's wanting awesome. to know. Yeah. Because, um, you know, when when we get to the point, um, I plan on donating Ash's cart. Oh, somebody oh. else will get it yeah well we're not in a hurry though right now he's no, enjoying no. it and skiing around like a wild man so. that's right <laughs> he's a cuckoo. so you no. so you you were received the cart as a gift yes yeah. and then uh tell us about the ski so we're we're learning that yeah. ash loves the snow yeah, and so what that. we did was we got him into the cart early while he still had use of his back legs to get him used to it yep and then in uh we actually made some pretty big mods to the cart yeah <laughs> made, made like a little just kind of to help cushion it you know make it more comfortable for him and yeah that's we did sweet. some tweaks and um it worked great except for snow yeah. and he was having problems and so we played around with a couple of different designs and ideas and what i did was um a couple of years ago I, actually it was February of 2020. I bought a 3d printer and <laughs> yeah, it's right behind you. And so what I said was, well, if we could just 
take a pair of skis, we could, you know, attach them to the cart. And it was just a matter of figuring out how to do that. Yeah. And so what I did was, you know, we had a friend that we, she's not part of our pack, no. but she's out at wilderness all the time with her friends running. And so we run into them all the time. And she says, Oh, I have a pair of old cross country skis. And you know, they're yours. I'm like, well, we're going to cut them down because we're going to use them for ash. She's like, Oh, that's awesome. So what I did was, you know, there's two little screws on the bottom that oh. attach this base plate. And then there's this little riser that attaches to the cart. And the cart has like a little oval piece that has screws with wing nuts on it because it's Nebraska and the snow's here one day and gone the next. True. <laughs> and so we could just undo the wing nuts and pop these off or pop them back on. And then the way that it sits, this sits just a little bit above the wheel so that with the wheels on, it can still roll. Like if we run out of snow, he can still roll, but it floats on the snow. Oh, and that's ingenious. He loves it. And the funniest thing, um, there's a few little hills in wilderness, but he found that because the wheel of the cart is right here. And so he's he's here or he's here and this is inside the wheels. Right. And he found that he can run. And he puts his foot on the back of the ski <laughs> and just kind of coasts. On the hill. He'll, he'll, he'll like ski down the hill with his with the back of with his back feet on the ski. He likes to go fast. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So That's fabulous. His his feet just kind of drag along like a rudder, but when he wants to go fast, he puts them back on the skis. <laughs> <laughs> and he just runs. Ash the little thrill seeker. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Audience, if you're listening and not viewing, please go to our YouTube page so that you can see these these skis and this apparatus. This is amazing. I love that you've done this. And I know, I know Ash loves that you've done this. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to say how delighted I am to, to meet parents like us. We talk about corgi people kind of being a crazy breed in a good way. <laughs> We're crazy, uh, but crazy, crazy about our animals. Um, yeah, right. You know, people say, that's not my dog. I gave birth to them. You know, yeah. it's it's a different different dynamic we tend to have, and uh, and I'm just so touched that you you care about Ash so much, of course, but that you're doing so much for him. And we talk to again, we're part of Shade Out DM, so we do talk to people that um, that have DM dogs, and and we just we love what you're doing for him, yes. and thank you so much for loving him so much and giving him such an awesome life. It sounds like you're doing the most you can do for him, and that's just the best thing ever. He's frankly spoiled rotten. That's okay. Yeah. Good. They That's what corgis are for. Good. Yeah. We Absolutely. love them. Yes. When you, that's, I think when God said we need something to spoil, he said, here's a corgi. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like yes. Nothing less. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We don't want to keep your whole evening. It's a little later where you are tonight. So we don't want to keep you up too late, but thank you so very much for sharing your story. And I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Um, so for your 3D printer, that harness that you created, do, is it available to yes. others? Okay. Yeah. So the the design was done. I do a lot of my, you know, I do my work in a software called SolidWorks. Okay. And that's what it was designed in. And so I do a lot of stuff with the SolidWorks community and, that's kind of how this whole thing took off because they're really pushing this makers program. And it's like, how are you using SolidWorks to make things? And there's a like magic wheelchair. Yeah. Magic wheelchair is a really cool, um, it, they build these really elaborate and, and expansive and electronic and mo mo movable wheelchairs for uh, wheelchair costumes for children. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's just amazing. And they've built these amazing. amazing costumes for, for these kids that, frankly, you know, the, the adults are like, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would like that. <laughs> right? And so it's kind of like, okay, you know, here's some of the ways that we're using, you know, SolidWorks as makers. And, you know, what are you guys doing? And so I sent this in and they're like, that that's very cool, you know, and they put us in contact with a few people and they were the ones that actually 
made the whole People magazine thing happen. Right. Yes, um, Ash was in People. Ash yeah. was in People. Yeah. Yeah. That's that is super cool. He says, "I'm a People." Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> I'm a celebrity. I'm a People. Why do we doubt and, that? And uh, so what I did was the files. I just uploaded them to the you know SolidWorks community, and okay. I'll probably put them on you know uh, GrabCAD or. One of the common places, uh, Thingiverse, there's different places where you can share designs so that people can just download and print them. Mm -hmm. And okay. so I'll probably put them up there. It's very specific to the particular wheelchair Which and is a the canine wheel diameter. Just so you know, he yeah. has a canine right. mm -hmm. Okay. And the wheel diameter, because I made okay. it fit his, but it would be easy to adjust to different size wheels and different size carts. All right, because I'm sure there is some yeah. other corgi out there that loves snow the loving. snow mm -hmm. and yeah. would love to have uh, skis for his cart or yeah. her cart. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Yeah. Lilo, loved, Lilo loved the snow. And it was yeah. so funny because he, uh, I got him from Oklahoma and they would get snow. But it was, it's so funny because nobody likes the rain. None of my corgis like the rain. If it rains, oh, they're wow. like, oh my goodness, no. Yes. Oh, but the snow, is. snow is. Be making little tracks out there. I'm like, I don't understand. You know, that's wet too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost as though he'll watch. And it's like, because a lot of times here, the snow, the rain will turn into snow. And he'll just sit there and wait. And then as soon as it turns into flakes, he's out the door. <sighs> that is so cute. That is he adorable. Is a goofball. So, and you, and you ski out in this park that you also take your walks in? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of funny because we, we were getting comments on a uh, board about these strange, these strange markings. What are these strange <laughs> markings? And we were like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because people cross country ski where we walk. Yeah. But right. But you don't normally see <laughs> paw prints in between the skis. <laughs> They're doing geological surveys over there trying to figure out what creature is making these exactly. tracks. Exactly. <laughs> like, what's up with the, the, with the weird tracks? And everybody's like, that's just ash. Oh, see, you could have you could have really created a fun little government conspiracy <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> what are the tracks in the park? <laughs> Never a moment with the pack. Wonderful. I, I just love this. The little pack. Little skiing pack makes me so happy. I don't well, thank know where you. We'd be without our pack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That I, support is so important. It is, it is. and it's and it's something for the whole family to look forward to every yes. weekend. Yeah, yeah. But, you know that's that's coming on the horizon. Yep, every Good. every Saturday and Sunday. Because we have yeah. a text string, and it just comes out, and it's like, okay, eight o'clock tomorrow morning, we're meeting at this entrance to the park, and you know we'll probably have. Six or seven people, and that means probably 12 dogs. Could be 12, 15 <laughs> dogs. Who knows? Wow. That is quite the pack. Yes. That's a posse. Yeah. Yeah. They range, Indeed. They range from this tiny little apple headed chihuahua named, um, uh, <laughs> chihuahua. I can't remember what his name is, but all the way up to oh, Everett. Oh, Everett. Yeah. This little oh. apple headed chihuahua named Everett. And then um, the, our largest dog is probably the pit bull, Sydney. Oh, yeah. wow. Unless oh. Junior comes out. Yeah. What, unless Junior comes out. What is Junior? Junior's like a coon, coon hound. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. He's yeah. Dog. He's big. And yeah. His brother's a husky. Yeah. You have the whole range. Oh, yeah. 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 And they play so nicely together. They, I mean, they've grown up together, so... We need to come out and shoot some video, like in slow mo, with some heavy hitting music. Yeah, you know the posse. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, like yeah. the intro to a movie with all of them walking slowly toward you. Yeah. Yep, that's perfect. <laughs> well, thank you again for sharing Ash's story. We're so grateful for what you're doing, of course, for Ash, and thank you for sharing and thank you for your ingenuity and. I can't tell you how much that your whole story just yes. tickles me. I can just imagine how happy little Ash is with his yes. little skis. Hey, you're happy. Okay. Hey, you're happy well, and you can tell, you can share some of the videos that I sent you because the one where he's running up, you can tell that he's a huge smile on his face. Wonderful. They smile. I love that about, I'm still getting used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. Digby will jump up in your face and smile at you. Yes, he will. <laughs> <laughs> just let you know I'm happy. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you all have a wonderful evening. Please give Ash and Brofer, his Brofer? 
Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's sleeping. Okay. Please give Ash and his bro for uh, tummy rubs for us from yes. all of us here at the Corgi Committee. Lots of well, pet well, Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, you too. Bye. How moved are you? Uh, very much. And uh, sharing that information. 3D printers are ridiculously amazing. Yeah. And so to be able to do that also will start to bring down the pricing in in some of uh, little by little my my chair is sort of sliding away from You're me. You're just like flipping I'm under the table. <laughs> I'm but adjusting yes. Kat's mic because she's just slowly oh starting God. to come out of frame. <laughs> so uh yeah, I'm I'm so thrilled that they they shared that with us yeah. and with the listening audience more information. And Corgi's on Wheels has a Facebook page. So if you are listening or watching, um, that's a great, of course, Shade Out DM. And there's a Shade yes. Out DM group on Facebook as well. Yep. And then the website with lots of information and um, the race is, uh, well, the race will be concluded by the time we broadcast, but um, but the race to Shade Out DM, um, those are all important resources. If you know someone who is going through the journey, um, please definitely support Shade Out, GM, uh, Shade Out DM. Um, yes. It's all about spreading awareness and we're huge proponents of that. But uh, more so, Corgi's on Wheels as well. Um, that's a that's a Facebook page, and the Blackshirts are a member of that. So you have a lot of collective experience there to help you. Um, but meanwhile, we are so thankful to you, Corgi Town USA community, and supporting our little podcast and supporting our Corgi lifestyle brands. Yes, we're here for you every Thursday, all things Corgi. And please look out, look up that people uh, article on, oh, on yeah. Ash. Ash is more information. See more pictures. And if you're listening, please go to YouTube because you can see Ash make his grand appearance on camera. That's right. So we're going to sign off tonight. Candy Cat, uh, Chuckles and Mortimer tonight. From all of us here at the Corgi Committee, have a wonderful evening. Bye.